Hey, what's up, everybody? Hello, everyone. Welcome back for another weekly Wednesday live stream. I'm Peter. I'm Ja. Of course. And uh, well, we've got a nice stream for you today. A lot of burning. Hell yeah. But afterburning. Because today, as we announced last week, is going to be all about MSI Afterburner. So did you know that Afterburner is this year actually exists 10 years? Really? Yeah. That's 10 years already. So it's really the anniversary, huh? The, yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. I remember 10 years ago. Wow. That's uh, <clears throat> a lot of retro stuff. Oh, yeah. We're going to look into that a little bit. Uh, I, I, I won't make it too much history, just a little thing so you can see how it started. But uh, yeah. Uh, but, you know, before we go into that, uh, we also have a giveaway, right? I also already saw a lot of people. Hello, by the way, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the stream for those of you who are uh, regular viewers uh, and the new people as well, of course. of course. Everybody's welcome. And everybody Always. has a chance to win because, as you can see above Ja there, uh, we, if you go to msi.com slash two slash insider or just follow the link that Ja will momentarily put in the chat, um, you can... Uh, yeah, uh, be a part of the giveaway, which is today a uh, several twenty dollars steam codes. So it's always nice. So yeah, guys, go perform the actions and uh, good luck. Yeah, just go to the link or go to uh, msi.com slash two slash insider, which is our uh, landing page as well. And uh, there it will tell you what you need to do. You can uh, subscribe and like and do several stuff. Uh, all, every action you do basically enlarges your chance to win. So that's it. Yeah. Do you respond to answers? I think you just did. Maybe. <laughs> Depends on the question. And also, do you respond to answers? <laughs> Maybe you meant questions. Yeah, he was already answering. I, I, that for I us. can also I can also respond to answers, but it depends on if I you know have anything to add or not. Usually, exactly. I just let it go. Yeah, <laughs> it's an odd question. I, was, I, I think he meant, do you respond to questions? Yeah. Fair enough. Creative. It, it, if it's a good question, yeah. If it's an entertaining question, perhaps. Um, just depends. But anyway, don't be afraid to, to ask your questions in yeah. the chat if you we'll want. Try to keep up with all the questions. Yeah. Um, so fire will. Yeah, exactly. Fire away. And, uh, but before we go into the afterburn, I also have a, a little bit of a treat for you guys. In case you you didn't quite catch the news yet, um, oh yeah, yeah, That's hot. yeah, exactly. So there were earlier today some uh, some pictures were uh, distributed to uh, a couple of uh, media websites. Yep, and um, yeah, it's, it yeah. shows the new uh, upcoming Evoke graphics card based on Ooh, uh, the Evoke. Navi card. Yeah, it's called uh, Evoke. Um, so this is one of the pictures. Um, also quite uh, would like to know what you guys think about it because it's a really new design it's completely different to anything we have currently so yeah what do you guys think about it uh, so this is I, I have several pictures by the way so just you know yeah we're gonna take our time to to look at each picture um, so this is one um, well you can already see uh, it's a very different design in both in color it's more like a champagne gold color uh, and also the, the the shroud so the outside seems to be pretty much um, metal and uh, no like really aggressive outstanding shapes there like our gaming or, or even Ventus for that matter. Um, so yeah, completely different shape. Um, let's see what else can we see. Yeah, on the side there, there's an interesting looking pattern of the uh, the, the vents there where the, the air can come out at the side. Yeah, I think, you know, something else that you really notice is that it has a complete different idea or look and yeah. feel with the gaming series. Yeah. That's, so, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, we can see, however, that it has the uh, Torx 3.0 fan on it. So this is the same fan that's being used on uh, our current generation gaming cards, which means that it's pretty safe to say that the thermal performance, I mean, the fan itself doesn't regulate thermal performance, but it's safe to say that if you're using Torx 3.0, the inside of the thermal is probably quite good as well. You know, you don't put that kind of fan on a, a cooler that's not good. And of course, it's an MSI cooler, so what do you expect? Yeah, so Easy Dose is asking quite a good question that uh, with Afterburner, mm -hmm. in the auto clock, it's 1070. I think he means the OC scanner. Uh, yes. Any plans to, with the same, uh, to do the same with AMD? 
No, uh, maybe this is best to go into detail later on. But uh, AMD, I mean, this this whole thing that you can uh, run the OC scanner on NVIDIA, some NVIDIA cards, the 20 series, the GTX 16 series, and the 10 series, uh, is basically because uh, NVIDIA has provided a uh, program or what is it, uh, um, an algorithm basically, um, which we've been able to include into Afterburner. So it, it's basically an NVIDIA thing that they developed. So that's why it's quite difficult to do the same for AMD unless they specifically help to design such a thing. So it uh, would be interesting, no, but you never know. at the moment, I don't, I'm not aware of any uh, similar thing going on for, for AMD or anything in the future happening. Yeah. We're getting positive feedback regarding the card. That's yeah. good. Yeah, well, that's the, I mean, you're you're welcome to if you, if you don't like it, that's also a yeah. thing. So Spoof Pass is saying that I'm I look happy with it. So oh, you, you look you, happy with yeah, anything, do, right? Do you mean like Peter <laughs> isn't happy with it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just really satisfied. You know, I, I, I don't want to um, influence your your opinion. You know, I have my own opinion, of course, but I'm really curious to know what you guys think as well because. I, I like personally. I like the fact that they've done something completely different from the gaming path here. You know, it's yeah. not not that I don't mm -hmm. like gaming. It's nice, but you know, a lot of the cards you see these days are all following a similar style. You know, with all the the angles and and the shapes and you know, a bit more aggressive looking. So, yeah, it's it's nice to see something different. At least that's what I think. Yeah. Less is more sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it really depends, and because yeah. it's 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 personal taste as well, right? Definitely, definitely. Some people like the, the, the big, heavy shapes mm. and the aggressive looks, and other people like a more, I don't know, maybe yeah. professional looking. I think it also kind of depends on your setup, right? How your setup looks with yeah. the motherboard and the rest of the components inside. If you yeah. have like a clean setup, this will fit perfectly. Exactly, yeah. So I have a, a, a second picture for you guys. <laughs> Golden boy, I like that, Hussein. <laughs> Nice, yeah. Maybe that's a, that can be a new slogan for the yeah, David Davidoff also looks amazing, very clean. Yeah. So this is a picture, a close-up picture of, uh, I, I assume, the rear of the card. Um, not quite sure. I, I think this is the bottom, if I'm looking at it right correctly. Yeah, I think this is the bottom uh, rear of the card. So also here, you know, you can see it's very clean. Um, it, it's full metal. It's it's you know a single color basically. There's there's no mishmash of colors going on. Not too many accents. Um, yeah, you can see a little bit of PCB through the through the side. Obviously, a part of the side there is open, so you can uh, you know the airflow of course needs to be good. So there's still plenty of space for the air to get out. Um, yeah. See, Dom Dom's a bit worried about his uh, GTX 1050 Ti being 83 degrees. Is it too much? Well, mm. yeah, you know it, it is on the high side, but. To be honest, that that is well, yeah, that is a little bit hot. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, your arrow, you probably have to up the fan speed a bit, which I can show you later on how to do that with Afterburner, yeah. uh, or at least make sure you have good airflow so your card can actually get cool air from your case. Exactly. So you know, you can consider maybe installing one or two uh, more yeah. fans in the front. Exactly. Maybe even yeah. on the upper. That, to, that can all exhaust. help. Yeah, that can all help. Um, Love it. I want a Chrome GPU. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe. Uh, but Don't also, somebody's ideas. asking if yeah, if it's the uh, 5700 XT or the nor the normal um, RX 5700. Um, honestly, I don't know. Uh, but it shouldn't matter because for both of those GPUs, there will be an Evoke uh, card available, and it should pretty yeah. much be identical. I think. Uh, maybe there'll be a s few small changes uh, to the to the heatsink. And of course, any changes that are um, tied to the GPU. So maybe, I don't know if it has a different IO. I don't think so. Also, I think that's the same. So, um, yeah. People want to know more about the card. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, so do I. Here's the thing. I don't yeah. have it yet here as well. I, I got these pictures. Like, I got really excited yeah. as well. Even internally, like it's still very new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really an experimental thing that we're really, I guess we're trying out and seeing, okay, how, how do people you know, do, do they like the, this as an alternative to gaming? Like, I don't want to say the complete opposite, but in terms of design, it, it kind of is, you know? It's everything the gaming is not. Um, it, it doesn't, to my knowledge, have LED, for example. Um, so it just focuses on understated design um, and, and very clean. So not too much going on there, but still very stylish. And, and it does have, you know, the, like the grate at the top there, you can see. 
yeah, there's some stylizing going on. There's not, you know, going for the simplest yeah. option of just straight lines or something. But it does give the card of its own character. Yeah, yeah exactly. It sets the tone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My Is it going to be hard to match the interior of casings in terms of color? Yeah, that that's true. But I, on the other hand, it will stand out. <clears throat> so that's also nice. depends on your personal taste. Yeah, Again, yeah. 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 We don't need to take a rash uh, wallet. That's not needed. No. <laughs> take my wallet. That's <laughs> nice. Oh, all right. So let's uh, look at uh, the different. Okay. So this is, the, I think, the back with the back plate. Um, also, you know, very minimalistic. Um, it, it, it's almost like you're looking at a, a, a notebook cover or something. You know, the, 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 yeah. the top of a notebook. Now that you mention it, it does kind of remind you also, maybe even on the bottom because of the screws mm -hmm. of the notebook. Mm -hmm. Very clean. Yeah, maybe, yeah. yeah. But there's, there's like, they really went with a minimalistic um, yeah. view and design on this, which I really like as, as a difference to what we already have. Because again, it's, it's completely different. <laughs> Is this going to be 2080 Ti? Um, no, I think the tests are already out on the, yeah. on the 5700 XT. It doesn't beat the uh, 2080 Ti, no. Unfortunately not. But I think Navi is going to bring out more high-end GPUs like Yeah, later, Lisa Su right? was yeah, saying she, that in, in an interview that there is going to be big Navi or something she, like she that. She didn't confirm it, but... Mm. Yeah. She kind of announced that you know there will be something even bigger. Yeah, like big Navi, something like this. Um, again, we don't know any details. We, we also read about it, and yeah. uh, it'll be interesting to see what they can come up with. I like the simplicity, smooth transition for the backplate and shroud. Yeah, same. Yeah, so uh, that's the idea, and it's good that it's being uh, received well, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's just, again, we'll have to see how the car performs when we get it. What about thermals? That's what most people are worried about. <laughs> Yeah, here's the thing. I mean, if you're looking at um, basically how it looks, you can see there, there are some fairly beefy uh, heat pipes going through it, and it has Torx 3.0 fans. Um, you can't really see that much of the heat sink, but I'm very confident that our engineers did a great job with that. I mean, MSI cards in, in general are known for that. Um, this is, to my knowledge, also a pretty premium card. Um, or at least that's what I've been told. And also what the outside suggests, you know, there's not, it, it's, a, it's a concept that's gone all the way, as in it's a minimalist, but in terms of quality, I don't think they, they, um, they, they're skipping on anything, you know, it's, it's, it's an all out. I, I could even go as far to say that it's probably kind of like a, a, a twin frozer setup um, underneath there. And I mean, the twin frozer, as we all know, that that's just really good. It's, it's the best, if not one of the best cooling solutions out there. And of course, at the sides, there's there's plenty of space for the air to escape, mm -hmm. which is also yep. always a good sign. So everything points to that this thing will will be quite good. But we'll have to wait and see for uh, when the car comes in. Um, I, I do believe I've heard some rumors that uh, there might be uh, a, one of these cards arriving next week in our office. So we'll give it some good tests and uh, see what we can do. Maybe if we're lucky um, and if we're allowed, we'll show it to you guys um, in next week's stream. Who knows? Mm. That's brave. Yeah, 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 yeah. But again, you know, it's something mm. just very different. So, um, you know, it's, I guess it's one of those things where either you like it or you don't, because it's, yeah. uh, if it's not your taste, then it's not for you. I mean, exactly. And sometimes even if, if you don't, it's not for you, I guess, you know, I have some personal experiences with uh, other stuff. It's yeah. like, the often you see it, the more it's going to grow on you. Mm. So maybe somewhere deep inside it does speak to you, but maybe You're not that, used that, to that it. still differs. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 But I mean, it's it's more of a I want to say you know it's, it's a bit more of a plain, clean looking card, simplistic, but also maybe even more like a professional looking card, if you will. Right. Yes, definitely. Something like that. Anyway, because generally that's more of the clean style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you know, not too abundant, not too you know too much showing off, uh, other than the gold color, obviously. But uh, yeah, all right. So yeah, that's. Uh, th I just wanted to share with you guys. Obviously, these things are also uh, on several media websites because I think this earlier this, today they, they were released, and uh, so they've also spread them. So don't know. I mean, maybe you didn't see them. So I just wanted to go over them and see what you guys thought. Yeah, I've um, seen it. Exactly. So now you know.
Um, let us know, maybe even in the comments if you're if you're rewatching this stream later on. Um, let us know in the comments what you think about these cards, uh, about this design specifically. Yep. If you like this direction or not. Um, maybe you know you like the design, but you don't like the color. Maybe you don't like the design, but you like the color. You know, can it can be. Um, we're just curious to see what you guys think. Definitely. But All other than that, it, it's looking to be a pretty damn solid card in in terms of performance. You know, I think you can really expect. <clears throat> basically the same from from all the, the the msi cards they'll be in thermal performance really good in, in game performance very good and really go around there now we always try to get the the best out of it obviously but it come with when do we colors. start talking about afterburner <laughs> will it come with different colors well not not as far as i know but that, that might be an interesting idea Mike. um mm. but we'll we'll see um like black or silver yeah i mean that's possible so yeah, we're, sorta, not sure, we're not sure. Sort of happy they didn't RGB it. <laughs> Scorch mark is saying, <laughs> yeah. I mean, here's the thing. It, you know, some people uh, uh, the RGB thing is the same, right? It's yeah. either you, you you hate it or you love mm. it. Basically, there's there's almost no in between, um, or at least not the people who who you know the vocal people who, who know, really like, talk. About I'm quite it. a fan of RGB, and you're yeah. more neutral, right? If I'm I, I like it. Uh, but I don't always want it on, you know. I don't like the, the always on full, you know, RGB circus. But I, I, every now and then, I do like to just, you know, yeah. put it on and I'm, just enjoy it. I'm slowly getting there to the RGB circus. I just ordered three new RGB fans uh, so, <laughs> for your case. Uh, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be a nice show. An RGB bill. You should do that on the stream, man. <laughs> I can't really, I can't really beat the stream that Mike did, where he wow. really went crazy with RGB yeah. belts. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, Hard to we we uh, RGB all the things one. then. We really, yeah. we really took it to meme levels. Capital of letters, RGB. all. Yes. Yeah. We really took it to meme levels Definitely. of RGB. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, uh, yeah, someone was already asking when do we start talking about Afterburner? Well, we promised, and, and uh, well, we're going to do it now. So, basically, before Afterburner was there, it was known as uh, the program was already there, sort of, you know, in, in, in one form or another, and it was called Riva Tuner. <clears throat> And Riva Tuner was uh, built or programmed specifically to, uh, in, in at the start at least, for uh, the NVIDIA cards. I think they were also called Riva TNT, something like this. So that's something why like I that. think that's yeah. where they got the name Riva Tuner, because it was meant to, you know, like fine tune, tweak that uh, GPU. The name kind of yeah, it did speak for itself. At that time, yeah, yeah. Um, so now uh, it, it became at some point, you know, MSI Afterburner, and and, and also it's a basis for other uh, software as well. But I think the, the most well known and most used uh, software of that is Afterburner uh, for a couple of reasons. Obviously, I mean uh, it's free. Um, it works with both AMD and NVIDIA cards, pretty much all of them. I think. I mean, if if you found one that didn't work, that it didn't work with, let us know. It may be some like uh, what is it, the, the Fire Pro you know, Radeon or, oh, or yeah. you know Tesla it's, or whatever the non-consumer cars. Maybe it's I don't getting know. into a higher segment. Yeah, but but I mean that that's not considered consumer consumer hardware. So basically, all the consumer cards you can think of, the the, the cards that would game with and, and you you would have at your home. Those cards should all work with MSI Afterburner. And also, it doesn't matter which brand. So it doesn't even have to be MSI. Mm. So yeah, a lot of uh, freedom there for you. And pretty much all PCs can use it. Exactly. I think that that's really like the beautiful part. It, it's so open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's no... No so discrimination there. No, and also <laughs> no, I'm just thinking, no advertising, right? Maybe we should do that. Guys, what do you think? Before you can apply a higher clock speed, you need, you need to watch a 30 second ad. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Oh my God. Like, Why didn't ever anybody think of this before? Exactly. <laughs> that's such a money driver. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah. Oh, oh so somebody was already asking, Baltic Seals is asking, when's the commercial break? <laughs> wow. Maybe we can we can <clears throat> get one in there for you. No, but I mean seriously, that's um, uh, yeah, that that would be um, I think a bad idea to do. Somebody's also saying NetRex saying I had a Riva TNT card, uh, like a Diamond Viper V550. I mean, this is like a long time ago, right? But the, yeah, I mean, these were like one of the earliest uh, dedicated NVIDIA graphics uh, chips and, and graphics cards. So yeah, that's pretty much where where it got its name as well, Riva Tuner. Um, and it's still called that, by the way. Um, 
But anyway, so what's, what we're seeing here is, uh, uh, I mean, earlier this year we had the 10th anniversary of the Lightning series of overclocking graphics cards from MSI. This was the very first one you're seeing uh, on the screen. So that was the N260 GTX Lightning. Um, and you can see at the bottom left there, there was a, there was a panel, at least in, I'm not sure if it was in, the, uh, in, in the, the regular card, the box, or they had a special version, I think the black edition or something. And that one included um, the Air Force OC panel. Um, and that's what you're seeing on the, on the bottom left. So I have a close-up view, as you can see. So this is what you might say is like a, a hardware version of mm -hmm. a very rough edition of Afterburner, pretty much. Mm -hmm. I mean, here you could do things like it had it had uh, uh, predefined profiles, as you can see on the left. You know, you see you see the game luxury back then. power saving, <laughs> right? Um, and then uh, on on the uh, far right, you can see there is a, a default or reset. You know, if you did anything wrong, you could just instantly reset it. Uh, and theater and lightning. So there were a couple of predefined profiles there, uh, which uh, these days you can also find in a lot of software. So it's quite funny already that uh, and this was. Well, this have had had to be what was it, uh, two thousand nine, I believe, right? Ten years, so yeah. Yeah, ten years, yeah. So two thousand nine. So yeah, long long time ago. Uh, but you can also, if you look at the the little things in the middle there, you can also on the left you have uh, core uh, light plus core dark. So these are voltages or or theater. So it's either core plus and it's core uh, voltage. You could up or down. Or if you're in theater mode, you could, uh, you know, make the uh, screen or the, the, well, basically your display uh, lighter or darker. So it's. I think uh, there's someone a little bit confused regarding uh, this topic right now because he's saying, uh, so I will need an external <laughs> cabinet for this to work with my laptop. No, Eduardi, uh, this mm. is like history, basically. Yeah, this back in the days. Yeah, this was like ten years ago. With the very first lightning card, this is what you got in the box, and this was something that you could, you know, include uh, in your case back then. And it's basically just to show you guys where where it all started, where it all came from. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, digital took over. So uh... <laughs> yeah, which is much better in the end, and also way more um, inexpensive, you know, cheap, I guess, because you don't need uh, like a physical external thing yep, to, to do the that. Manufacturing costs. On the other hand, it did have its charm, I have to say. Looking at it yep. like this, you know, back <laughs> then, I, I, like, I, I kind of miss those days where you, it's, you it's had It's tangible, to... so. Yeah, yeah. Well, there is some charm to it. Um, so yeah. But like I said, so you can, you can there change the uh, core uh, voltages and the memory voltages. There's a second one from the left. And then uh, on the right side of that are three basic um, toggles as well, where one is, uh, all our clock speeds and back then you could even do your shader clock speed separately so you had core clock speed plus or minus memory clock speed and shader so all of these things i mean just imagine overclocking with a with a little panel that's inside your case but just by pressing pressing some buttons <laughs> well you don't even see buttons because it was like more like a but not really touch mm. screen but you know yeah. touch display thing voltage theater yeah i know it's um that's the thing, Davidoff. It's uh, it depends on which mode you had selected. So I guess if you had the lightning mode selected, you, you know you would uh, it would be voltage that you were changing. But if you would put it in theater, it would be either you know light or dark and and contrast settings. Anyway, it's uh, <laughs> someone's looking paying at attention. It, sorry, someone's paying attention. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But it's nice. I mean, yeah. these are the things you know. Back then, you had to think about it like. But looking at it, it's quite funny. But anyway, so we came from this, basically. This was delivered with one of the first lightning cards. And um, well, I, I think later that year, maybe, I, I suppose we were already working on MSI Afterburner at that time. Um, but with the second ever lightning to be released, which was this one, the uh, 275 GTX lightning. Um, also a great card, by the way, also NVIDIA. Um, and with that one, there was the first ever version of MSI Afterburner, and it looked like this. This was the uh, Lightning Afterburner version, by the way. So um, it was, I, I guess, also um, specifically designed with features for, for extreme overclocking, or at least overclocking in mind, you know, not like daily usage. So you do have some profiles on the left. So you can see there's game, there's power saving, and there's default. Um, 
but not quite as much as you had on the uh, on the external yeah. display. Yeah, for those you know who maybe don't know what lining in our lineup means, it's like more of uh, the extreme overclocking versions of lineups in the it's, GPUs. It's basically we always uh, pretty much took the the highest GPU of any generation. Um, and then made a special card out of it, which was, you know, we just tried to use the best components, um, the, the best cooling, um, some new features usually were included, you know, some that, that you didn't see anywhere before. Very often those features were then, if they were successful, implemented into the next generation gaming cards, for example, or, or power edition or whatever it was called back then. Uh, these, these names have changed over the years, obviously. Um, but yeah, I mean, the Lightning series was, was basically, you know, the, the cream of the crop, the, the the, the the series if you wanted the best card of the msi lineup the lightning that was the thing uh and yeah it was more expensive because you know you you try to offer like no compromise the best card you can build um and the goal of that in the end was also you know overclocking uh breaking world records uh either in in performance yeah. benchmarking you know like the, the 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 3d mark points for example or just raw um, clock speeds, for example. You had you had records for, or you still have actually records for uh, just running a, a benchmark, completing a benchmark at a certain clock speed, uh, no matter the the score. You know, the score was a, was a separate uh, board, a high score board, um, but also like memory speed and stuff like that. So yeah, no compromise. No, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and DJ, um, ah, we are. Actually how does one to, install? Yeah, yeah th we're gonna get to that. Um, yeah. So we'll show you. But how you to already noticed. Skin. You already noticed uh, because indeed on the uh, msi.com slash two slash insider landing page, we if you can see the buttons, we also included a link, a button uh, to download a yeah. special skin, and it's funny you should notice and you should you should say that because earlier this year at Computex at least, so that's only a couple of months ago. There uh, was a special version or a special skin of Afterburner on display. And it was basically in honor of 10 years of lightning. And just keep in mind how this one looks, this skin, and then look at this. Ah, looks familiar, right? So what they did is they, they um, made a lightning skin based as much as possible on uh, sorry, an, an afterburner skin, I mean, based as much as possible on the very first lightning uh, afterburner UI. So that's pretty cool. Um, I think it looks really nice. I mean, I can, I'll just switch back and forth a little bit so you can see there's a lot of similarities. You know, the, the, the gauges at the top and, and the graphics basically, but also even if you pay attention at the bottom, those, uh, those three areas where you can change the voltage clock and the fan basically, they still divided it into those three which is it's different from the the current um the, the current afterburner skin so for me when i first saw this i was using this skin i was kind of you know looking for stuff like uh where did they put the uh voltage oh here we go so you know it's it always a, happens with new stuff it, well yeah if it's different layout then you know you need to search for things but in the end it's uh it's really a throwback it's really nice um, so yeah, you can actually get that one from our website and I'll also show you uh, later on this stream uh, how you can actually uh, apply that basically. And you don't even uh, need to overclock uh, Kaki if you if you don't like that or if you if you're you, you're not really uh, comfortable with it or maybe you just don't think it's worth the trouble or you know. Um, but you can use uh, Afterburner for a lot of different yep. things. And we're actually going to find out. Exactly. We're going to show you a couple of those things uh, this stream. Um, and we hope that, you know, uh, maybe a lot of you guys already know how to use this, how to do this. We've shown it in, in previous streams as well. But we always get a lot of questions from people about how, how do I use this specific feature? How do I set up OSD? How do I, you know, what's the first step for overclocking? And is there, isn't there an easier way, um, you know, stuff like that or how do i use the, the hardware monitor for example you know because there's a lot of data on there but you know what does it mean uh, yeah um and, and for some people it, this can be quite um you know difficult i guess there's a lot of yeah. information there to process beautiful skin looked very retro exactly uh that's a jet uh, jet plane image it is yeah that's also why you know I mean, afterburner yeah the logo obviously kind of afterburner the name Pretty much comes from um, the, the the thing that the um, jet engines can do, where they actually pump out a hell of a lot more uh, um, jet fuel for an extra boost. They, that, that's the afterburner. 
Exactly. So you get the nice flames at the end of it. Um, and that's kind of the idea with the Afterburner software as well, is that you can give your um, graphics card just a, you know that bit of extra juice so that it will produce more horsepower, more graphics horsepower. Uh, but it will also get hotter a little bit. Yeah, Fo is asking, how do you install F uh, MSI Afterburner? There's no download link on MSI site. We're also going to show you that, yeah. so you might have missed it. Uh, in that case, I will show you exactly yeah. where it is. Actually, exactly. I'll, I'll show you exactly where it is. Even if you just Google it, MSI Afterburner, you yeah. will see that there is a dedicated landing page for it. Uh, but, but I'll show you the landing page in a minute as well, and we'll go through the installation. Uh, what you need to do it and what are the most important things. Uh, if you could cover, DJ Ace is already saying, if you could cover the basic 101, how to overclocking. Yes, I will do that today, actually. So, or at least I was planning to do that. So, um, yeah, stick around. Okay, Fawu <laughs> already found uh, the, the link, so that's good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice joke. <laughs> All right, so uh, basically, um, you know, this skin, um, I think. Maybe you can, um, you have the, 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 yeah, the have direct the link. link, right? Can you uh, put it in the chat as well? So just uh, say this is the uh, the Afterburner um, skin link. Just a moment, people, so we can try it out. So yeah, if you just go to the chat, uh, you can see the yeah. direct link to the, well, the anniversary. Yeah. Afterburner uh, skin. Afterburner skin. Yep. And I'll there show you in a minute. Go. You know, you can just download that. And inside is a, is, is a very small file, basically. Yeah. It's not even half a, a megabyte. So, um, and inside is a, is a file. And I'll show you exactly after, you, uh, after I show you how to install Afterburner and where to get it. Uh, I'll show you where you can uh, apply that skin. It's actually quite easy. When you know where Afterburner is installed, there's a, there's a little folder called skins. Spoiler alert. Um, anyway, but yeah, so Afterburner supports skins. I just want to highlight a couple of things that Afterburner can do before we go into uh, detail. Afterburner can uh, support a lot of skins. Already when you install it, uh, standard, the standard version of Afterburner already has uh, like 10 or more skins yeah. already included. So you can already choose. Enough choices. Exactly. But you can also uh, look for and apply your own skins, basically, or custom skins. Let's say it that way. Uh, the link does not allow me to copy, post the link. Yeah, on Twitter, uh, Edwardy, it's a bit uh, difficult because Twitter doesn't al really allow us to um, post it. It's, yeah. it's not really included in our chat program. So if you want the link, uh, your best bet is probably to open the uh, MSI stream somewhere like on YouTube, for example, or on Twitch, because there the link is more, you know, the chat is more yeah, directly Yeah, there he can also support enjoy it. 1080p. Exactly, yeah, it's high resolution as well. Um, so probably better to do that it's very easy you just have to go to uh, youtube and type in msi gaming you can get on our channel yeah. and it's really promoted right there yeah exactly so that's easier to to get um so yeah skins is nice um but also the thing you see on the top left ear <clears throat> that's the uh, osd or yeah. on-screen display feature basically it gives you the opportunity to uh, monitor certain system system metrics so you can choose which ones you want to display actually so like fps ram usage memory use gpu usage temperature anything basically and uh i think it was like a, two years ago or something that they changed it it used to be just numbers uh but then two years ago or something they added a feature where you can actually uh, view it as a graph as well so it will you know show you uh, along a length of time and you can really see if there's any you know, big ups and downs uh, while you play the game. And the thing about this is you can actually have this open over the game, like you see. So you don't need a second monitor, especially if you're using a laptop or something, this is perfect. And why is this uh, useful or important? Well, it's nice to, to see this kind of stuff for one already. It teaches you a lot about your system, how it performs. Yeah, but definitely. more more useful even is if you have, uh, like very specifically, if you have issues with your system, it's uh, bottlenecking somewhere, but you just can't figure out what's causing uh, your system to bottleneck or, or you know bad FPS, FPS drops, that kind of thing. Uh, this can really help you to figure out what's going wrong or what is bottlenecking your system. You know, Is your GPU uh, uh, stressed out to the max? Is it getting too hot so that it's throttling? Uh, is your CPU doing that? Um, is your memory, for example, fully used? And is it like, you know, does it, doesn't it have any more RAM uh, to spare? Um, stuff like this, you know, this, this can help you to, uh, to find 
the reason why things are exactly, happening yeah. if you know how to read it. I remember back in the days, like a really long time ago, I first saw this like in videos from benchmarkers and stuff yeah. like that. And I was wondering like, how, where, how can you how, do that? How, yeah. how did they do it? Like yeah. nowhere did anyone ever state, okay, no. this is how you do it. And I then always thought it was part night, of like the game or something they were playing. Yeah. And then finally I found out and it was such a relief, like, oh my God, it's so satisfying. Now I can finally do it to myself too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is there a way to display that info all the time? Like on a desktop, G DJ Ace asks. Um, Actually, you can display that on a lot of other yeah. applications too, but I'm not sure if you really li literally mean on your desktop. No, it's like it's it, this is this basically this triggers when there's a, a 3D application running, uh, the OSD at least. But you can, uh, of course, in Afterburner itself, you have the uh, hardware monitor part, which is basically the same thing. So if you're not in a game, you can also monitor it. But uh, if you're talking about you you want it like as an overlay for, for example, web browsing or stuff like that. Uh, not really sure if you can do that, to be honest. Um, maybe, but I'm not really aware of uh, of the possibility to do that. Maybe you can put it like always on top. That might be a thing. Uh, but I don't know if you can really uh, use it like this. Um, yes, graphic. It's also uh, it, it shows you, for example, which version of Direct 3D or or you know um, uh, what is it? Uh, DirectX. DirectX, uh, yeah. indeed, it's using. So in this case, like PUBG, you know, it runs on uh, DirectX 11. Yeah. It's so, also quite an old, uh, I think, uh, screenshot from the game. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, so in, you can also then, for example, see in some games, it will be running at DirectX 12 or 11 or even older. And sometimes that, that might also help you to find the problem. Because if you're using a really new card, you want to be using, uh, for example, DirectX 12, if possible. Uh, because they, those are usually more optimized for it. So, you know, then if the game supports it, you can switch to DirectX 12 mode this can make yeah. a difference. Yeah. Vau is also asking, OK, uh, he put his core clock to about plus 70 and his memory plus 300. How much FPS will this gain him? Well, this is this is really like uh, exact science and math, like, OK, this much and this much will mean this much FPS. It really depends on your hardware, depending on the game, depends on other settings. Yeah. So we can't really say, OK, this will translate no. into that. And even per really GPU. Differs everywhere even per gpu this can be different because um each gpu is, is is slightly different in terms of efficiency as well so at, at exactly the same clock speeds for example one uh, 2080 ti will give you slightly different results than the other 2080 ti um, even if they are exactly the same card type you know they're both for example lightning cards there will be a small difference so yeah i mean um you can you can always the best thing you can try you're, you're already getting good advice in the chat as well i'm seeing you know just use uh benchmarking software software like um valley you know there's free software available unigen uh, is valley for example yeah. you can see the difference and um yeah i mean you can always try yeah i can definitely try so chat is really uh <laughs> very curious yeah yeah it's nice it's good um, yeah, so this is one of the things you can use. And I mean, it even goes so far as to, uh, for example, you can use Afterburner from your phone. So you will have to install like a, a server thing on your PC. Uh, but then you could hypothetically, or actually you can do this uh, from your phone, you know, do the overclocking. So you can use your phone like a, an external panel. <laughs> That's very nice. It reminds, I mean, me, also reminds it's one me. of those, uh, it's one of those uh, gadget things you know like i, I prefer to do another yeah. pc but it's nice i guess that there's our, an our i guess our gaming osd that's where the idea derived from because yeah. with our gaming osd uh we can also do the same thing with mobile but yeah. this is a lot older so yeah <laughs> yeah exactly uh and as you can see there's also a bit of an older version of afterburner on the on the screen right now you know it's uh it's using for example the hd uh, 6900 series which is uh older uh, but this is also one of the skins that Afterburner has been using. This was the default skin for Afterburner for years, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, and as you can see, standard it had on the right side the hardware monitor there as well. Anyway, um, yeah, let's um, let's get into uh, let's get into some stuff. So where you can find it to start there, basically you can find it by uh, either you can basically Google it uh, and just go MSI Afterburner. And I think the first hit should be i hope so will be our landing page for afterburner uh, but or you can just go to msi.com slash page page slash afterburner and then you'll get to this landing page 
basically there. You just have to scroll down. Of course, it, it covers most of the information and, and you know features yeah. stuff. Uh, it tries to explain it to you. And at the bottom, you get the uh, the download links. So here you have yeah. two download links for Afterburner. Now you have a choice. You have the, the final build, or you can uh, download the beta. Uh, basically, Afterburner is pretty much always working towards the next version. There's, a, there's almost always a beta version available, in my experience. And to be fair, uh, also in my experience, the beta versions are also pretty damn good and stable, in my experience. So it's actually, you know, it's quite safe to use the beta version. I always do. Um, Difference usually is just, you know, they're, they're usually just um, changing a few things, maybe supporting a few new cards or trying that out or trying and adding a new, some new features which might not function 100% stable yet, but they will uh, quite soon. So basically what you just do is you download one of these. If you want the phone version I just showed you, basically you have to download this one on your phone. Uh, currently, I think only Android is supported, though, so yeah. I'm not sure if, this, if you can use it on, on iPhones or on Apple phones. I, I guess not. Um, and you will need this remote server, basically, so it can communicate with your computer and you know, do the yeah. adjustments. It's like setting up a bridge. Exactly. So once you download Afterburner, uh, well, I already have it on here, but what I'll do uh, for uh, the sake of uh, just the whole guide is you get this file. Here we go, and just install, uh, start the executable file that's in there. So you just start that one. You allow it, of course. Uh, choose the language you, you want. Um, I will do English, of course, and just click OK. Then it will just tell you, OK, it's re recommended you, you close all the programs before you start. That's fine. Just click Next. Uh, well, you can choose to uh, read the whole license agreement. There's, I, well, it's actually relatively short. Read it. Make sure you're not selling a liver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's not, there's not anything um, dodgy in there. It's, no, from, it's from just from saying the agreement's relatively short. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. So it's relative. It basically it just says, you know, we're we're supplying this. Uh, it's it's um, can only distribute it electronically through MSI, basically. So it's, you know, this this is owned by MSI. But it's free, so you don't need to worry about it. Uh, it's supplied as is, so basically, you can you, you use it at your own risk. I mean, there really isn't that much risk, but fine. Um, it's it's a legal thing. Anyway, uh, just accept it. And here you can see basically there's two choices, right? So there's uh, Afterburner, which is already you know that that thing is mandatory. That's you need to install that to be able to use Afterburner. Obviously, the second thing is Riva Tuner. Remember that name? Riva Tuner Statistics Server. Now, this program is what you need if you want to display all the statistics, all the, the, the system uh, metrics, basically. I call it the fun package. It's, yeah, and, and honestly, it's also a very small package. You, you shouldn't notice it running, basically. I mean, it, it doesn't use up any resources, pretty much. Um, and again, there's nothing dodgy going on. The whole package, it's less than 60 megabytes. There you go. So it also doesn't take up that much space. Um, so I, I would always recommend to also install uh, Riva Tuner Statistics Server. If there is a new version available of either Afterburner or Statistics Server, you will get a notification and it will tell you, do you want to install the latest version, yes or no? Anyway, uh, just install it. I usually just do it on the, on the Windows disk because, hey, you know, it's such a small amount of space and there's usually some space left. Um, so install it. Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, actually. <laughs> I'll do it again because I already had Afterburner running. So I'll just quickly um, do it again. Just so I can show you guys how it looks and how it works. Here we go. English, yes. Of except, course, someone next. is asking a good question regarding you know, what's the risk involved with overclocking a GPU? Uh, it used to be a lot bigger because. Um, it used to be that there weren't that, well, there were some limits on the graphics card, but you could do a hell of a lot more. So you could really change um, voltages. And, and so you could basically get to a point where you're, you, you would push so much voltage through a card that it would actually overheat. And uh, pff, like some stuff could, be, could get damaged. Some components could get damaged. Uh, but that was like years ago where yeah. that was actually possible. Now, I mean, because of that and because of those things happened, uh, for example, NVIDIA and, and AMD have built in fail safes, basically. So they, they don't allow you to go. It's included in the VBIOS, for example. So it's not something you could change through software. 
uh, but they don't allow you to go to levels that are actually dangerous for your card. And even if they did, your card will sh will either throttle down, so basically, you know, lower the clock speeds and the voltage just by itself as a you know to to protect itself, or it will basically just crash and reboot or reset. Basically, your graphics card will basically just reset um, and and revert to the default settings. So that's kind of the worst that will happen on any graphics card if you don't use a um, custom V BIOS or something. So and that's already you know relatively technical because like a, a custom V BIOS or even uh, hard modding. So actually like you know taking a soldering iron and, and making changes on the graphics card. That's what some extreme overclockers have to do to be able to circumvent these uh, limits that are imposed. So, but for, for, for you at home, if you don't yeah, do anything everyone. to your card, there's basically nothing you have to worry about uh, using Afterburner. Yeah, it's a good uh, safe fail. Yeah. Uh, all right, so basically, so Afterburner, as you can see, installed like really quickly. Uh, not surprising, because again, it's a tiny package. Now it, it's asking me, hey, uh, install a language. Basically, this is uh, the icon for uh, RevaTuner statistics server. It doesn't tell you yet, um, but this is for the second program. So I also choose English here. So here it's saying, hey, um, about the installation. Basically, it's saying the same version is already installed. Do you want to continue in installation anyway? Because again, I already had it installed. I'll just say yes. Let's just install it. You, again, you have to in, uh, agree with a, a license agreement, basically, which just says, hey, you, you can use it, but uh, we're not liable for any damages. Again, I have yet to see anybody really damaging their PC using Afterburner or a statistics server. It doesn't really happen unless you do crazy stuff yourself. Um, so just install it. Again, it's fairly fast. It's a small program. You might need to reboot your PC after you install this. There you go. Um, so it's currently using me up to right now. Reboot is required to finish the installation and update these files. All right, I always recommend to then reboot, so let's just do that. Well, let's uh, hope it uh, yeah, let's hope it operates works. normally. In the meantime, see if there are any mm -hmm. questions. Yeah, are. No, um, um, is this useful even for just gaming? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there you, there's always a little bit of um, performance gain to be had, um, mm -hmm. even if just a few percent. Yeah. Uh, so either that, so it's free performance gain, um, or as you can see later on, you can also use it to uh, keep an eye on your system vitals, your FPS, or uh, like, for example, set a custom fan curve. If you want your PC or your fans to either turn faster so they keep the card cooler so that it can boost higher, that's possible. Or you can um, try to keep the card more quiet by uh, lowering the fan curve, basically, the, the speed it will run at. Okay, so we've rebooted. I, I really put on a nice retro uh, back, uh, background. So very limited long-term risk as well. Yeah, I mean, DJs, this is one of the things, very good question, actually. Um, one of the things I, I saw a long time ago um, where, you know, one of the major concerns with overclocking, where, where people said, it doesn't matter if it's a, a CPU or a GPU, but they said, does overclocking shorten the lifespan of your components or your, your, the processor itself? Um, the, I think that the technically correct answer is yes, but the but. lifespan is... Should be like more than a hundred years, maybe even you know within normal usage. You know, it should be like longer than you ever use it, basically. Um, so yes, it would shorten it, but it would be like maybe from a hundred years to eighty, which is still uh. way longer than you would use it. So uh, technically, yes, but not to an extent where you know you you should um, you know it should break within the time that you're actually using it and that it's still relevant for use. So. No, it shouldn't be. Um, it shouldn't be anything, any relevant um, uh, shortening of lifespan. At least, not with MSI products. So that's, I'll have to say it there. I can't speak for other manufacturers. I don't know what kind of materials they use. We always make sure that our systems and our uh, components, you can, you know, the, at least the overclocking that we uh, um, support and we allow within because this is all within warranty right if, if you use afterburner you don't lose your warranty um, so if something happens while you're doing this it's still covered by warranty you know which is great yeah so so that's also something to consider but that also means that we actually support this kind of overclocking um, so that also tells you that we're confident enough that nothing will happen you know 
Um, and if something will happen, it probably won't be because of the, what you're doing in Afterburner. It probably is just something that happens to the card. Unfortunately, it does happen every now and again to uh, some cards. Hopefully, not many, but you know, it happens. That's that's real life. Yeah, I mean, some cards, you know, even without overclocking, yep. can also have some problems. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 It's just sometimes uh, you are the block. Exactly. But that's very minimal, luckily. <laughs> uh spider logan is here um you're using an older driver uh do you need to upgrade well i always do recommend it yeah um depends if you if you don't notice anything usually the um the incremental up driver upgrades uh, or updates i should say from nvidia a lot of them just have like updated um what is it game profiles game ready profiles you know so that it might give you a little bit better performance in in specific games because they'll be more optimized for those but in general yeah i just keep it up to date that's always the best thing to do we always recommend to just use the latest drivers who likes fried chips yes please <laughs> I like uh, fried eggs better. But it depends. I mean, like fried chips, like, you know, the ones that you can eat. Yeah. The, like fried GPUs or mm. memory chips. Yeah, not so much. Well, unless you're aiming for that, but... The smell, you know. <sighs> yeah. it's, it's one of those things that haunts you in your dreams if you ever do it. Uh, all right. Don't overclock a laptop, says Nintendo. Well, you can do it. But, I mean, laptops are a whole different level where... You know, it's a cramped space, so you have limited cooling capacity, so you can overclock. But what you sh should consider is that when overclocking, uh, adding, you know, you, you basically, uh, it's, it's like uh, tuning your car, you know, like, like an engine. So you make the engine run faster, uh, but it will consume more power or more, yeah. you know, fuel, and it will produce more heat. And... Especially the heat is uh, a potential problem in, in a laptop form factor because you have limited space. So it can only get rid of so much heat efficiently. And beyond that, basically, I mean, the fans will obviously go wild, but also you will, um, yeah, it, it will start throttling quite, quite quickly to protect itself and try to keep within the temperature margin. So in my experience also, there's not that much point to, to overclocking on, on at least many laptops, unless you have like one of these beastly GTs from, from <laughs> MSI, you know, with, yeah. you know, those are like thick boys, you know, like with a big fat heat sink as well. Um, yeah, those ones can, can overclock pretty well, I would say. Yeah, the chat is also helping each other, so that's also good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tips always, you know, the, the, we yeah. like, the, you know, we love you guys, the community we're building here as well. And a lot of you guys have a lot of knowledge. So, you know, those who have some questions, the others can answer a lot of the time. Yeah, well, if you have a 2080. Um... <laughs> yeah, Baltic Seal is already saying with a 2080 yeah. gaming, I run <laughs> steady 80 to 110 FPS at 4040p in most games. So yeah. why overclocking? Well, you don't need to do it. No. The thing is that it's for some people, overclocking is a game and a challenge in itself. Just because they want to see how much extra can they get out of their card for free. Because again, it, it just only yeah. all it takes is time, basically. Exactly, and it's also a nice learning curve for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Get more knowledge regarding, you know, it, the thing that's actually giving you so much pleasure. Yeah. Playing stuff, you know, working on stuff. Well, that's exactly what you said. You know, I like to do it because you know it, it's it's nice that I can do something, you know, test something, and then can work out my hypothesis. Like, okay, will this setting work? Can I push yeah. this card to this limit? And yeah. then it will work, and then. It's just really satisfying. Mm -hmm. um, Diablo is asking, is it so it's not usable on laptops? It is, uh, actually, very much so. Uh, especially, you know, I mean, you could still... I know people who, who actually uh, do, don't do overclocking, they do undervolting on it, um, which is also quite useful, where you basically force the, or try to force the graphics chip to work more efficiently. Um, I'll try to show you that in a minute, uh, how that works. Anyway, let's, let's go back to the PC. So... It's rebooted, um, and as you can see, I'm on my desktop with my fantastically retro uh, background here. It's coming right at us. Exactly. Um, so I think this is also one of the first ever uh, lightning backgrounds created. Really nice. Um, so rebooted. Uh, let's start up Afterburner. Here we go. So this is Afterburner. Um, no, actually, this isn't the... Uh, the standard one. 
Let's see. Because I want to show you guys basically what happens when you install it and, and there's nothing uh, changed yet. So I'll, I'm just going to like yeah, pretend manually. You're not, you're, exactly. Pretend you're not seeing this right now. Yeah. I'm just trying to manually put it back into uh, the place where, settings. Yeah, where it used to be uh, factory settings. So this is your standard uh, look, basically. This is how it, how it standard uh, looks by, by when you just install it by default. Um, basically, I'll just quickly go through, you know, the UI. Um, this is the standard UI. The other ones can look different. Here's your GPU clock on the top left in the gauge. So this will tell you uh, base and boost speeds of your uh, GPU. So at, at the moment, of course, it's idling, so it's only 300 megahertz. When I start any kind of 3D application, it will boost up to the designated speed. Uh, below here is the memory clock speed. Same thing, basically, it's clocked down to save power if when you're idling or, you know, just in desktop. Um, and once you start an application, it will start to boost up. Um, right here, it shows voltage, but it's also showing zero, zero millivolts, which is not correct, of course, because the card is powered. It's using some power, some voltage is being pumped through it. Um, however, you uh, have to enable something, uh, uh, an option to be able to read this out. Um, so this is not enabled by default when you install this program. And here is the temperature, of course. So again, same thing uh, when the card gets uh, used. And you can choose this. You can you can change it to Fahrenheit or to Celsius. Fahrenheit, so oh. depends on <laughs> well, it depends on on you know what what's easiest for you or where you live, I guess. Uh, but also you know, so this can get hot or not depending on what you have. So as you can see in here, I've got a 2080 Ti, and it's currently running at idling at 33 degrees. Um, Basically, the first things you want to do to enable the voltage monitoring is to go to your settings, which is here. Open it. There you get a new menu with a whole lot of options, of course. Uh, but no worries. Exactly. Some of them are already um, ticked. The other ones are not. Just in the first tab, in the general tab, you basically just enable two things, which are standard, uh, by default, not, um, not selected. One is unlock voltage control. So this will allow you later on to uh, play with voltages. I mean, this, this sounds scary maybe, trust me, it's not. Um, because as long as you don't check this box, it doesn't really apply the voltage yet. It just gives the card more room with voltage to use basically. And this is the big one uh, to, to make sure that the voltage here is actually being displayed, unlock voltage monitoring. So you have to actually unlock this and then click apply. Probably then Afterburner will say, well, we have to restart to do that. Sure, no problem. As you can see, restart really quickly. And there you go. Now it's showing the actual value. So 780 millivolts, 18 actually, 718 millivolts. Um, easy as that. Also some things that are quite useful here is uh, the driver version, which is being displayed here. And um, your graphics card, obviously. Some other things here then, um, core voltage. So this is uh, the uh, percentage of your core voltage. And this is what I just unlocked with the first option I uh, checked. Uh, basically, it just allows you, in percentages at least, it allows the car to use more voltage than what it's standard uh, defined in the VBIOS. Again, if I put this even to 100, nothing happens yet. Uh, so don't worry about it. Also, no setting, doesn't matter what you change, clock speeds or whatever, fan speeds, nothing happens yet. Oh, actually, I need, I need to unlock that. Uh, nothing happens until you click Apply. So before that, nothing happens. Uh, and also good to know is if you're uncomfortable or you just think, oh, I, I don't know what I'm doing there, I made a mistake, I just want to go back to the default settings, there's also a button for that, which is the Reset button. And this basically, as you can see, it will just put everything back to the default settings. So it's like it's like your panic button, I guess. Um, yeah, Ed is asking uh, if he, if he's installing or using MZ Dragon Center, will this uninstall? Well, Afterburner. No, um, you can actually use it side by side. Although I wouldn't recommend using it at the same time because I mean Dragon Center has a lot more options, but it also indeed can apply several like predefined profiles. Um, so there is a possibility that it might you know mess with each other it, it might just work quite you know well alongside each other but if you're gonna uh, go into you know overclocking or, or, or you know tweaking your gpu i wouldn't recommend using them at the same time just just to be sure that it doesn't mess with each other basically exactly 
And uh, well, I think it's been quite a while. Yeah, I think maybe it's time, you know, before we go on to the next part, choose a first winner for our uh, for our giveaway. Well, I hope you guys uh, went to the giveaway link and performed all the actions. So we're going to draw the first winner. Let's see. So for those of you who hasn't uh, participated yet, go yeah. to this link right here. Go to msi.com slash two slash insider. There should be a button there, actually two today. Uh, one will be the button mm. participated in the giveaway. The other one will be where to find the special skin that we'll be showing you later on as well. Yeah. And yeah. So we have a winner. We have a first winner. Yes. What is and his or her name? It's Siphon. Siphon. 327. Three, I'll leave ah, the gender up to you guys nice. to decide. I don't know. All right. So congratulations. And we hope you enjoy the Steam code, that you can buy something nice with it and play. Yeah. And those of you who haven't, well, go to the link and yeah. perform all the actions. Well, for those who have already participated, don't worry if you haven't won yet, there is still yeah. more chances And you don't have to, to participate, you don't have to uh, enter again. So if you only, you only have to enter once, for this stream at least, you know, for the, the, any future stream, you'll have to uh, re-enter yeah. basically. But if you enter once, you don't have to enter again. So uh, you'll automatically be selected to uh, participate in the next draw of exactly. the winner. So there's uh, more codes to give away later this stream. So good luck to those who just joined. Yeah. So I, I, I see some people saying Dragon Center and MSI Afterburner on my PC does not work together. Um, uh, Kaki is even saying maybe uninstall Dragon Center if you want to use Afterburner. I don't think you have to go that far, uh, but make sure maybe that you know at least they're not running at the mm -hmm. same time. Exactly. So not applying the same settings in which yeah. they can have conflicts. Yeah. yeah. So that's basically it. All right. So then back to uh, Afterburner. So I've got a couple of toggles here basically again this was the voltage uh, uh, the power limit um, and the temperature limit are by default uh, linked together which is this little chain here you can actually unlink them by uh, clicking it so you, you know if you have the link uh, the chain intact basically if you move any of them they will move together because these are also usually quite um, yeah they're linked together by default anyway um, and but you can also do it you know separately and these things basically determine um, power limit. Basically, determines how much of the power budget in the V BIOS, you know, that, that's determined by either MSI or, or Nvidia. Uh, how much of that power can the card actually is it allowed to use? Um, and basically, you can give it like eleven percent, something like that, eleven percent extra usage, or at least that's how it's defined in here. I think in practice, actually, it sometimes comes down to 10 or 15%. It, it really depends. Uh, but basically, it just gives you an idea that, OK, so I can give it basically a lot, a little bit more room um, so that it has a little bit more power to play with. Again, doesn't actually mean that it will use it. Um, so it's just giving it some extra room. Same with the temperature limit. This basically is a, a gauge that will say, wait, uh, when you reach, uh, for example, this temperature that you um, put here, uh, the card will start throttling back because then it will say it's temperature limited and so it needs to throttle back to get the temperature down as well. Uh, and so by default, again, uh, the, the, the card will be allowed and able to run 84 degrees. So uh, the person asking, you know, before 84 degrees, it is a bit on the high side, yes, uh, but it's still not um, something that we would consider like, you know, it's yeah. broken or something like that. of the world. No, but it, it is quite hot, yes. Uh, but you can also up that, as you can see, to about 88. So that's still considered safe. Um, and then you have the toggles, of course, for core clock, memory clock, and fan speed. So uh, these ones, especially core clock and memory clock, you have to be a bit more careful. So these ones, basically, you can just drag all the way to the end, apply, nothing happens. Even you can see the, the voltage that's being used. Even if I put core voltage up to 100, nothing, you, nothing happens. You know, it just stays the same, temperature stays the same, clock speed stays the same, nothing. Why is that, Peter? Well, we've already mentioned that because, you know, this is basically saying to the card, you, you get a bit more to play with. Yeah. But only if you really need it, it will actually do it. Now, here comes the actual overclocking part. So this is where the overclocking happens. So that's core clock and memory clock. This, when you uh, drag it, for example, you, you say plus 100 and apply it. 
again, you'll see nothing happens. And it's actually, it gave it a lot more, but that's fine. 100 apply. Here we go. So as you can see, nothing happened yet. Because these things only take effect and actually only uh, are uh, applied into, um, like tested or you know applied to the graphics card, it will only boost, try to boost to those speeds if you run an application that will actually use the graphics card. So for that, you can use a game or you can use a benchmarking tool. Um, and the memory clock is the same thing. Also here you can you know, easily, I think memory actually overclocks quite well on these cards. So I'll just put 500, for example, uh, plus 500 megahertz. Again, nothing happens yet. I've applied it, nothing happens yet. The fan speed is also something you can very easily play with. Right now it's on auto. So basically it will follow an, a predetermined fan curve based on the temperature. So basically this comes down to how the hotter the card gets, the faster the fans will spin to try and cool the card. That's, that's the basics. Um, but you can also say, wait, I want the absolute, um, you know, coolest that I can get the card. So I want the fan speed up to 100%, apply. That will take immediate effect. So now, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but you know, we hear the, the fans spinning quite loud. Yeah, the Trident X is flying away. Well, not really, but I mean, again, you know, and this is 100%, so it, it, it will be loud, yes. And you can already see the temperature dropping. So you can already see that it, it's taking effect, it's cooling the card even more. Again, you know, 31 degrees, 30 degrees, it, 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 it will never go below room temperature because, you know, it, it with air cooling and, and I think water cooling even, you can never really go below the temperature of, in, in the case of water cooling, you can't go below the temperature of the water itself, obviously. And uh, with air cooling, it's the same thing. You, you can't really cool it lower than the temperature of the air that's being used to cool the card. Um, so I'll just put it back on auto. And again, it will basically just well, almost stop the... I think this is a, a Ventus card in here, 2080 Ti Ventus. So yes. uh, the fans actually don't stop it. It doesn't have the zero frozen feature. But 24% uh, is like the minimum value. It's basically just, you know, that's like idling for the fans. All right, so we've covered those settings. Um, then at the bottom here, you have um, the... Uh, statistics graphs. Yes, graphs. the, the statistics, yeah. the hardware monitor, basically. And here you can see there's a... Well, basically, you, you have a, a couple of things you can, you can see, but you have to scroll, and it's a rather small window, right? So what if you want a better overview? Well, there's a button here that says Detach. You do that, and there you go. Here's the... Um, a bigger overview, you can even extend it like this. And here you can really find a hell of a lot of information. So there is um, GPU temperature, for example, GPU usage percentage wise. So that's really useful for if you're looking at, for example, if you have a game that's being bottlenecked and you have low FPS, but your GPU usage is only like 20, 30%, at least you know it's not your GPU that's bottlenecking your experience. So this is one of the things how it's very useful. Um, and also, it's useful to keep this open, and it's a graph, because um, if you're in a game, for example, it's hard to keep an eye on this. So then if you exit the game, this is like, I don't know, like, like a minute or maybe a couple of minutes, actually, uh, that you can actually look back on the behavior of your graphics card. So if you had a problem like two, three minutes ago, you can actually go back, quit the game, and then look at, so what actually happened at that time when I was experiencing that problem. Um, there is, uh, this isn't Facebook, <laughs> Facebook user, no, this is a uh, front bus uh, fit. So these are different things on the graphics card that are actually, um, yeah, different stages basically. So this is a bit more technical to explain. I'll, I'll skip that for now. Memory usage on the uh, graphics card in, in megabytes, that one's quite easy, right? Every graphics card has a certain uh, number of memory available. Um, so you can see how much of that is being used in in megabytes. As you can see, this card obviously has uh, what is it? Eight, yeah, like eight, eight, eight gigs. Yeah, yeah, should be eight gigs, something like that. Um, then uh, memory clock, so you can see what kind of clock speeds you are getting. Uh, the power percentage, also look how many. Basically, this is how many, how many, uh, or how much percentage of the available power is being used of the card. And power, I mean, uh, the power limit that you set. Fan speed, so you can also see what are my fans doing. Uh, and actually here you can see the fan speed. Obviously I, I just put it uh, on higher. So there's a fan speed in percentage wise and it went from 24% to 100 because I put it on 100 manually. Um, 
and that's basically oh it actually even uh, monitors both fans uh, separately so there's fan one and fan two but there's also the uh, taco meter so basically this is the actual rpm so how much rpm is the fan making so 24 uh, percent is basically like around 900 rpm and 100 percent is about 3700 rpm so as you can see that's quite a difference uh, temperature limit. So this this is basically uh, can tell you if it's uh, if your card is being um, hit by any limits or if it's hitting any limits. Let's say it that way, it will display here. So either it's it's maybe um, running into the power limit, and and it can't boost any higher because of that. For example, uh, voltage limit. Same thing. If it's if it's using the maximum voltage it's allowed to use, then uh, it will say, all right, I've now hit the voltage limit. So this won't. Uh, cause your car to crash basically but it will um, at that point limit the any additional performance your car might be able to give um, node load limit uh, another relatively technical thing but not just your graphics card the other stuff of your system so here you see for example cpu so you also can mo monitor your cpu uh, cores and what, it, what they are doing in usage in temperature um, and let's see we also have CPU clock speeds, of course, there you can all see, as you can see, there's a lot of up and down, up and down, up and down on this one. Um, the CPU power, so how much power is it drawing, uh, RAM usage on your motherboard, um, and other things, frame rate. So there's a hell of a lot of things you can put there. It's way more than just GPU, it's much more versatile than that. Mm. So you can use this for a lot more other things to yes. monitor. Yeah, yeah. So also, I mean, it depends on your system as well, what it allows you to monitor. I've, I've noticed some laptops, uh, for example, have less uh, options available because they might be restricted. Um, but usually on your PC, you can you can see most of these things. Um, so that's uh, basically the hardware monitor, and you can basically you, you can get it back into the um, into the main UI again by just clicking the red X close it and it will just reappear here like it was by default at the start again also there's a, a lot of tool tips so if you don't know what something is and you just mouse over it I just had a nice example here we go it will give you a tool tip by you know just putting your mouse on it and you'll have something to read about it uh, you can enable um, afterburner at startup so basically here you go if you click this um, actually I don't know which one is on or off, but... So no, when you click, click a red, yeah, it should be Yeah, I think on. so, yeah. yeah. So now, when you restart your PC, it will also automatically start Afterburner with Windows. Now, why would this be interesting? If you have an overclock enabled, um, you probably want to keep an eye on it, and you want to uh, make sure that uh, it's being applied every time you boot your PC, you start your PC. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, discussions going yeah, about, on, about, especially about laptops. Yeah, I see. Laptop yeah. battery. <laughs> well, I mean, laptop. There's a there's a hell of a lot of uh, different science that goes into it as well. It's a different way of overclocking or you know finding the right balance. Yeah. Yeah, especially uh, because you know, like you just mentioned, it's so more much more compact in there. So it's the difference is going to be less delicate. Well, it's going to be more delicate because you have to find the right balance between yeah. heat and performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, usually the laptops are already kind of tuned that way. So they, from the manufacturers, they already try to, out of the box, give you a good experience and a good balance between uh, a good performance, but also manageable heat and, and not too loud fans, you know. Um, but you can always use programs like Afterburner to, to find your own balance as well if you think you can do better. So that's what this is also very useful yeah, for. Yeah. So this is basically manual overclocking that I just showed you. These are some some of the basic, like very basic things you can do. On the GPU, or sorry, on the NVIDIA GPUs, um, the RTX 20 series, GTX 16 series, and GTX 10 series, uh, NVIDIA has uh, allowed, or basically, yeah, given the uh, a, a program or a, uh, an algorithm to do like automatic overclocking. It's basically overclock scanning. So that's also why we, we call it the overclock scanner or, or OC scanner. So in this skin, it's located on the top left button, OC, with the little uh, looking glass. You click it, and then you get this window. You have two options. You can test and you can scan. 
If you do scan, that, then it will uh, start looking for stuff. Before I do that, I will show you quickly basically what it is. It's uh, the same as the uh, voltage frequency curve. So what this program, the OC scanner will do is it will check out per, uh, per voltage point, basically. So at the bottom you have voltage and millivolts and uh, vertically you have the frequency or you know, the clock speed, basically. And what it will try to do is per uh, voltage setting, so it will check, okay, so at, for example, 750 millivolts, how, uh, how much frequency can I get out of the card? Like, it's basically like an efficiency setting as well. So it might be that your card is able to, to boost to, uh, at, at 750 millivolt to, for example, 1600 megahertz already. But it's not set that way by default. So by using the OC scanner, it will be able to identify like the optimum um, efficiency curve of your card. So it, it might, and it usually will be able to get a little bit more frequency or a little bit more performance, if you will, out of the same voltage level. Um, so that's, um, and scanning is not only available on the RTX cards, uh, Nintendo, it's, it, it used to be, that when it started out, it was indeed only available on the RTX 20 series cards. But now it's available on the, also the GTX 16 series card, so 1660 Ti, 1660 and 1650. And uh, later on, they also made it available for the last generation NVIDIA cards, which are, is the uh, GTX 10 series card. So anything from, a, I don't know, actually, maybe a 1030, I'm not 100% sure, but 1050 for sure, uh, mm. up all the way up to... Uh, 1080 Ti and maybe even the Titan. Yeah, I'm not 100 sure on that one. Generally, you wouldn't go for a 1030 for gaming purposes. No, but I mean, you know, there's 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 people who have it, and it's not just for gaming purposes. You know, even for afterburner like this, if you're doing rendering tasks or whatever, and you or you you want to use multiple yeah, where's CPU you know, screens. And... Yeah, it, it's just you know giving you more control of your GPU, and um, yeah, it, it it lets you do stuff that before you didn't really or you couldn't really do it's it's quite complicated because you know there's a lot of information that goes into it it's also a, a very much a, a trial and error experience yeah especially when you do it manually because basically what you do is you just try a setting and then run a program to see okay so does this run or not or does it crash and if it crashes hmm, okay so that probably was a bit too high then i need to find that's the, the sweet fun. spot that's the game for a lot of exactly. people yeah and if you uh, even if you come across you know problems you know online nowadays there's so many stuff that you can go to to look for you know uh, troubleshooting and stuff yeah. maybe you have uh, other people in you know, forums giving you tips so you can you don't have to be afraid that even when we're not live streaming you want to try <laughs> something out you can still go look for answers yeah. yeah exactly so basically this curve basically says uh, it's the, the higher the voltage is available the higher the frequency speed it can boost to. Also depending on other things like the temperature, for example. Um, and here you also have the OC scanner button. But of course, you know, this is already hidden away in, in the menu. I mean, if you don't know where to find this, then it's already hard enough. So basically the OC scanner feature is located here. And you can just, you know, click scan. It will start scanning. Uh, I did this and it will take, uh, on this card at least, it took about 20 minutes. Something like this, because it takes time. You know, each individual point, it will basically just, it will actually start loading the card. Uh, it will get hot. It will, um, you know, the fans will start spinning, something like that. You can see it actually uh, loading the card and then just applying a different frequency and then seeing, okay, how high can I get it before the card start starts, you know, becoming unstable. And then it will just take the the most stable, uh, the highest stable setting, basically. That's that's it. And that for each point, it will do that. So as you can see, there there were a lot of points uh, here. There's a lot of points it needs to go through, and so that's why it will take. Uh, well, depending on, I've seen cars do it in ten minutes. Uh, this one does it in about twenty. I don't know if it's a higher, you know, like a 2080 Ti that it takes more time than, for example, a 2060. I don't know. Could be. Maybe it makes, uh, it could make sense because, you know, the stronger cars, the beefier cars, they generally have a, a bigger range of the voltages and uh, yes. frequencies and core clocks, uh, you know, stuff like that. So there's much more to test. Well, core clocks, not so much. I mean, that, that can be the same as, as any other cards, but indeed, the, especially the voltages, yeah. um, you know, they, they have more power at their disposal. Obviously, they, they'll consume more power as well. But anyway, that's... Uh... 
All right, so that's the uh, automatic one. And once it completes, that's basically where the, so that's the scan feature, it will complete. It will tell you we found an overclock. It will do four passes, I think, just to be sure. And then it will find uh, or tell you we found an overclock of, for example, 100 megahertz extra. It will only overclock your GPU, so not your memory. If you want to do that, and that is recommended, we, we do recommend that if you overclock your GPU, you also overclock your memory a bit, because there's also performance to get from that. So uh, it would be a shame if you don't do it. And then it will uh, tell you, OK, so we've found a suitable overclock. Uh, then you can test it by using this button, so it will Again, try to verify, OK, is this safe? It will give you a percentage. I think it's like, usually it just tells you it's like 89, or sorry, a 98 or 99% sure it's, it's safe and stuff like that. Again, nothing will happen even if it's not safe. I mean, the worst thing that can happen is that it, it, it crashes and it will revert back to the default values. That's pretty much it. It's actually a bit safer than uh, overclocking your CPU. You have to do a lot of manual motherboard tuning. Yeah, you even yeah. I mean, for the for the CPU, you you usually have to go into the BIOS and so yeah, yeah. it's quite easy these days as well. They even made a lot of like predefined profiles for yeah, for a lot of the processors. But yeah, but the manual part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I've already done the uh, the overclocking uh, for on on this thing like the the, the OC um, scanner. I've did done that yesterday, and I I saved it as a profile. So also when you have uh, a setting and and okay so this is your overclock setting for example you want to save that but you also want to be able to switch to like the default setting whenever you feel like it because you, you might not want to keep it in the overclock settings all the time that's fine what you can do then is just say uh, click the uh, the little disk button here the save button it will light up the profile numbers and you can just say all right i want to save this one as profile five for example and then boom profile five this is unlocked. If you want to make sure nobody can, can mess with your profiles, you can lock them basically so then nobody can you know change them. Uh, also a nice feature. So now you can basically just switch between profiles. So profile one, I only did the overclock curve. And as you can see, then it shows curve. It doesn't show a number of the overclock um, speed or you know what it's uh, applied. Again, you still need to click apply if you want to apply that profile. And now I can just switch back and forth between one profile and the other, as you can see. Easy as that. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's pretty much overclocking for you uh, on most cards. And again, it's, it's a game. It's more like, you know, just try it out. Um, and then if you apply an overclock setting, again, what, what, I, what I mentioned before, you can, uh, I think we have 3D mark on this one. Um, so, for example, you can just start uh, 3D Mark. There's a, a free version of 3D Mark, I'm sure. So you can uh, always download a, a free benchmark. But just so then, you know, you can, for example, before you start overclocking or on the default settings, you can run a benchmark and see the score you get. And then afterwards, you can also run a score with the overclock settings to see the difference, if you actually got a performance difference or not. And also, just to test, is it stable or not? Again, you can also just go into your favorite game and see the difference, and if there is any difference, uh, but also to test is it running stable or not. Um, do keep in mind that it, it can be, uh, if you're really pushing the limits, that uh, the, the graphics driver could crash, which means that basically your, your game will also crash. You, know, it, it, you usually can't um, restore back into your game, but you don't even have to reboot the whole PC when this happens. Yeah, so you got to be careful with uh, game saves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't so really uh, exactly. So, your game. Yeah, or don't start like a, a competitive game, whatever, you know, where it's important that, that, you know, you have a reliable PC that it doesn't crash. Don't use that as a test to yeah. see if it works. That's not really recommended. Not that it damages anything, but it will, it can get frustrating. It damages yeah. your gaming experience. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it tests your patience. Uh, you could show MSI Combustor as well. Yeah, so there is also a program which we uh, use, which is MSI Combustor, which is here. Um, you have to, I think it's not included in the standard version of MSI Afterburner. So you have to download it separately. I think it is on the landing page I showed you uh, before. And basically this is, I don't know, most of you might be familiar with Furmark. Um, Furmark is like what they call also a power virus, or you know, it's basically just saying, what if I, um, 
load the car to extreme measures, what, even like beyond what games would do, and just basically to test how hot will it get and uh, uh, will it crash or is it, you know, can it handle that? The problem with these programs right now is that um, for a couple of years already, I think uh, both NVIDIA and AMD have recognized that um, sometimes it's not a good idea to run these programs because they can actually push um, products to overheat and, and um, shut down or throttle, you know, at least it's bad for the experience. So most of the uh, newer products uh, and drivers will recognize a program like this and will preemptively um, nerf the, or like throttle down the speed. So it's, it's not really that good a representation, in my opinion at least, anymore as it used to be. So that's why these days I much more, especially also for a, for a more realistic scenario, I m recommend mostly to use a, a benchmark like Unigen, for example. They have, they have free mm. benchmarks. Yeah, um, Unigen Valley. And, yeah, and they put like a similar stress on the system like a game would do. So it's more of a realistic setting anyway. Yeah, I think the benefit there is also that with uh, uh, Unigen Valley, it doesn't really maximize the screen. So it can, you know, re in real time, apply changes and see if you can see artifacts and stuttering, yep. stuff like that, see if it's thr throttling. So you don't have to go back into your desktop, open the app, and then go back to the game again, Yeah, like you otherwise would do. Yeah. Basically, you can see it's, it's showing, for example, the temperature for uh, the CPU and the temperature for the GPU. And as you can see, it's, it's heating up the GPU a bit. You know, it's now up to 70 degrees, still nothing to worry about. Uh, but that's basically the thing that you can still use Combustor for. It's basically just to test thermal performance, for example. But in terms of like actual performance, I don't think it's a good representation. Uh, but as you can see, it also uses uh, the OSD from Afterburner. Um, yeah, even though over this is the, not a game. Yeah, but that's because this is putting like a 3D load on the graphics card, so it will um, it will use that. Uh, but it's OpenGL basically. <laughs> what button opens the frequency curve, uh, Propane? Maybe you didn't see it. Um, let's see if I can show you again. It's a very, very tiny button or icon, basically, right next to the text where it says core clock. There's a little like graph type of icon there with three bars. That's the button. That it's like yeah, it's, it's like it's like the it's uh, tiny the Wi-Fi icon. Yeah, maybe you know what I, I can show you something else because um, within this menu there's a lot of options, but right at the end there's user interface. Here's where later on I'll show you how to uh, change the the skin as well. But here you can also choose the scaling. So maybe by putting it like absurdly big like this, that's that doesn't make it any prettier, but you know it might be more clear. This is the little icon I was talking about this little thing here, these little three bars. So I think now you can you can clearly see it, right? Yeah, it's indeed very little. Then you can click it and, and wow, everything scales. This is ugly as hell. Uh, let, me, let me put slide, it back to 100%. Slide roll back to the 2000s. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Let me just put it back to 100. Here we go, apply. There we go. There, that looks better. Um, let's see. All right, so we've done some basic overclocking. We showed the OC scanner. Um, let's then show you some more um, options. Uh, let's start with the skin as well, because we we mentioned already uh, it Afterburner comes with uh, several skins. Um, actually, I should move it this way. So. There's a couple of settings here you can choose from uh, your language as well. You can always change it after installing, um, but also temperature, time formats. Um, and here's this. Here's where you get the skin. So as you can see, there's a lot of skins already installed. There's one in here that's not uh, standard installed, but uh, that's fine. I will show you later on how to install the uh, file for the Afterburner anniversary skin as well. But as you can see, and you get a preview down here as well, if you select a different skin, what it looks like. So there's a hell of a lot of skins here you can choose from. Uh, all of them look a little bit different. All of them have their own design. Uh, this is a variation of the current um, default design. Uh, this one as well. This is, I think, the current default skin if you install, which is the one we're seeing also yeah. here. 
Um, there's a, a different, it's like a little gaming thing, Afterburner skin. Um, there is this skin, which is also a variation on the, anyway, there's um, a lot of different skins you can choose from. There have been recently added, uh, they added some more skins, which are like completely different. They're not just small variations in color, for example, but they're like completely different, like this one. Um, or, or even this, like steampunk. Look at that. <laughs> this is just like, <clears throat> what the hell? <laughs> Oh, there, there's always going to be people that like it. I know. So I, I really like that they, they put this st stuff in there as well. You know, like tech afterburner. There you go. So there's there's a, a lot you can choose from. This one's also like completely different. I don't know. Anyway, um, so this is eventually the skin that I'm going to show you how to uh, how to install. So let's get to that part right now. Basically, when you get the file, you download it. It's a, what is it? U, UF, UNF file, something like that. Yeah, so Ja just yeah. put the mm -hmm. uh, link in the chat again. So just go to the link and you can test it out for yourself. Yeah. So, and what you have to do is just, you need to kind of remember where you installed the MSI Afterburner, uh, but when you uh, know where, in my case, it's on the Windows drive, C drive, and then uh, I think it's the normal program files. And then look for um, Afterburner, L all. No, maybe it's no, the other one. The other one. Here we go. It's always, I, I really don't understand yeah. why the difference. I never anyway, did neither. It's, it's there is random. a difference, but uh, so here you go, MSI Afterburner. Go to the install folder. And then there's a couple of files obviously here, but also uh, folders. One of them is called skins. That's the one you're looking for. And all the skins are in here. So basically the USF file that you downloaded, which is this one, the MSI Lightning Anniversary, you just paste it in here, basically. Just copy it in there. And um, I think you might have to restart Afterburner before it shows up. But then when you go into the options, oh, wait a minute, here we go. When you go into the options, user interface, it should be in this list. So that's how you use it. And it's completely free. Exactly, also. And it's just to celebrate so no micro 10 years of Lightning, 10 years <laughs> of Afterburner. No microtransactions. It's indeed, it's, uh, it doesn't give you any performance benefits, uh, the skin. It's, uh, it's, uh, mm. it's like, a, yeah, like in it's the game. It's an eye pleasure. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's cosmetic. I do think it's starting to grow on me more and more. Which one? The skin. Yeah, the lightning skin. Yeah, I, I like it as well. I like the simplicity about it. Yeah, the, the thing, it's like, it reminds me of a, a dashboard. It's like the, the Raptors dashboard. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how it looks like, but it kind of gives this, this vibe. Yeah. yeah. Well, it just basically looks like the old Afterburner skin. It's like the first yes, one. With a modern jacket. Yes, yeah, with a, with a very modern design. Um, Okay, for the for the rest, I'll just switch back to the um, to the default interface because maybe that's easier. Uh, let's see, it's the white skin. Here we go. Yeah. It's just to keep to keep things like you know, keep an overview of things. Uh, might be easier. Back to the options then. Um, so. There's, uh, we've been talking about fan control. So you can, as you saw before, I could, uh, there's, normally it's on auto, so that's like there's an, a predefined fan curve, which basically means um, when uh, the card will uh, speed up the fans when you go, when the temperature goes higher. I explained this before, right? So when you want to enable your, or enforce your own fan speed, you just click auto, so that disables it. You click apply, you can, you know, just uh, drag the, the fan speed. It's, it's all the way from like the minimum value, which in this case is 25 or 24, up all the way up to 100%. So this is percentage wise as it shows here. Um, and so you can basically say, no, I want my fans to always spin at a certain speed because then, you know, I'll make sure that it's, um, it, it keeps cool. Here's also why the guy with the, the higher temperatures on his uh, graphics card, uh, this is one of the things that you could potentially do, for example, if you put it on like 50%, that's usually a bit more than it's uh, what what it's uh, spinning at. Um, you know, it might help you to keep your card a bit more cool. Uh, but 
Also on the opposite, you can say, no, I want my car to be more quiet because I, you know, I think the fans are spinning way too fast and it's, it's too loud. So you can put the fan speed uh, down to a lower percentage, which obviously makes it more silent. Also, do keep an eye on the temperature while you're doing that because it could, if the temperature then rises to like 70, 80 degrees, yeah. it might impact your performance because then the GPU might start throttling down in clock speed and that will cost you performance. So especially don't forget to put on auto when you go to gaming yeah. again or yes. heavy rendering stuff. Exactly. So when you're actually doing uh, like gaming or indeed heavy rendering stuff, really loading the CPU or the GPU, I mean, then you should make sure that uh, uh, yeah, your fan speed is a bit higher to be able to get rid of the heat. But I mean, this is just setting one fan speed for like, you know, this is like, I, I'm setting it to 54% and that's it, you know, it, it won't change. It's not gonna change no matter how hot or cold the card gets, it's gonna keep spinning at this uh, RPM and, and at this percentage. But what if you want to create your own fan curve? It is possible. So let me quickly show that. Here's the button where you enable that. It's basically, it just says, if you want to enable a user-defined fan curve, but you haven't seen yet where you can actually create this curve. So that's for that, you have to go to the properties, the options again, go to the fan tab. This is usually not ticked, but I'll do it now. User uh, Enable user-defined software automatic fan control. So here is where you can set your own fan curve. So you can decide, look, um, I want my fan to like under 30 degrees, not even spin or, you know, just the lowest value whatsoever. Uh, there's no real limits other than I think uh, you can't put, for example, a, a higher temperature at a lower fan speed. That's, no. I, I think if I You'll try to apply it. this, see, yeah. it, it gives me an error. So it, the only rule basically here is that your, um, your fan speed percentage uh, at a higher temperature needs to be higher percentage, uh, equal or a higher percentage than uh, the percentage before it at a lower temperature. That's, I think, the only real limit there. So you can basically say right up to, um, I don't know, here we go, right up to about 70, 70 degrees. I want my fans to be like almost stationary, you know, just not spinning or at least at the lowest possible level. And only when once they reach uh, like 70 degrees or, or start to go to 60, it should like ramp up quite quickly, you know, but that means that up until a certain temperature, you definitely won't hear the fans. But it will mean that when it reaches higher temperatures, the fans will start spinning to cool it down, which is obviously a good thing. Usually by default, because here's now you've created basically a, a custom fan curve. So you might think, what if I made a mistake and I, I want to go back to the normal one? Well, again, here's also a, a, like a fail safe. You can always go back to default. And as you can see here, it's a standard fan curve that will be uh, put in place. You have some other options here which you can play with, which is basically the uh, fan speed update period in milliseconds. Uh, I'm guessing this is, uh, you know, the, the interval at which it measures the fan speed. So you can actually make it uh, really fast or really slow. Um, same thing here, basically, or temperature hysteresis. This basically means that um, if you have the zero frozer feature, below, for example, if, if we say below 60 degrees, the fans will completely stop spinning, right? What will happen is uh, sometimes is if you your card will be hovering around the 60 degrees mark, right? So you you pass 60 degrees, the card goes to 61, 62 degrees, the fans will start spinning. When that happens, the card cools down again. So the card goes below 60 degrees, fans stop again. So the card goes up in temperature again. So you see the problem, right? So that's basically your you, you will basically what you will see of it is why the hell are my fans, you know? Spinning, stopping, spinning, stopping, spinning. What the hell? You don't want to do that, at least not too fast. You know, in the end, it's a good thing. But again, it doesn't, you know, not within a minute that your fans should start and stop like 20 times. That that will just look weird. Um, it's also not very beneficial. So that's where the temperature hysteresis comes in. So basically, you can give it a an offset of, say, I don't know, like 10 degrees or, or 5 degrees or something like. So that means that basically... Um, five degrees above or below the temperature that you set, uh, it won't immediately change the fan speed. 
it will, it, it's like a, a delayed, it's like a built-in delay pretty much. So it will wait until it's either very high or very low above the temperature limit or, or the, the value that you set. And then it will immediately um, act basically. So either it will start spinning high, uh, faster or to cool or something like that. But until that time, it will just, you know, keep doing the same thing. So it's a small thing. But we noticed that a lot of the times, um, if you don't use this uh, built-in hysteresis, this, this delay or this margin, you will get a lot of start stopping for obvious reasons. Um, and then you can also force fan speed update on each period. So the, again, a lot of options, just play with it. This is fairly harmless as well. And then it's just something that you can play with, for example, to make sure that your fans are spinning less uh, less fast or you know you produce less noise so it's something that's quite neat and then once you've made your own custom um, fan curve basically so you say okay apply i just made one there we go um, you can make uh, the card uh, use this fan curve by clicking this little cog wheel here and then you know the the, the graph highlighting around it is basically saying, hey, now I'm using a custom fan curve that you set. So quite easy, right? So much control. <laughs> yeah, a Baltic Seal knows exactly, he, he knows his stuff. Uh, the thing I was just describing with the start, constant starting and stopping, <laughs> <laughs> it's called a hysteresis loop indeed. So that's basically just, you know, I feel like I'm telling. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry if I if I really if it really feels like a class. It doesn't really. I'm not really intending for it to be like that. And in fact, let's do something that doesn't really happen in a class. Let's choose another winner. Oh, another winner. <laughs> See, let, let's make it a bit less than a like a classroom or a college. So, guys, I hope you guys paid attention. So, uh, let's draw another winner and yes. see who is the second winner of this time. I bet this doesn't happen in college. No, you don't. Oh, get free no, you, stuff. Don't, you don't. Yeah, they might throw something into the seats. You know that that does happen. But. Yeah, <laughs> crayons. Yeah, if somebody's so, falling asleep. All right, the second winner is oh someone very popular. Oh, Thanos GR. Oh, Thanos GR. Congratulations. Yeah, I'm not sure what the GR stands for, but I like the Thanos uh -huh. card. So uh, congratulations with. Uh, Steam dollar. Yes, twenty dollars Steam code. So yeah, and we still have at least one to give away. So if you still want to have a chance to win a twenty dollars Steam code, you can go to msicom slash two slash insider, click the button that says uh, participate in the giveaway. Again, you don't have to do it again if you already enrolled for this stream. So you can just uh, chill, yeah. watch the stream, and you still have a chance to so win. We still have it in the pool. Exactly. And if the link above doesn't work for you, I will once again post it in the chat in yes. case you just joined. So you still have a chance to join. Yeah. So. There you go. All right. Um, okay, then back to Afterburner. So um, I think I just want to cover one more thing, basically. It's it's somewhat complicated uh, in its own right, but I think mm, it's very useful. Well, as in there's a lot, again, there's a lot of options and a lot of things you can do, and it's uh, on-screen display. It's how you can customize what kind of data you're showing in your game about your system. So uh, you have two tabs that are, that are important for this. One is monitoring, and the other is on-screen display. I'll start with a smaller one. And this is basically some, some really basic information. Um, this allows you to set a hotkey, for example, to toggle it on and off. So basically to display it or to make sure it, it's, it's not obstructing any views. Now, you can, you can make this, you'll see later on, you can make this as big or small as you want on the screen. But I can also imagine that, you know, you don't want to have it there always. You know, uh, some people just want, want it there when they uh, want to keep an eye on their system hardware metrics. But yeah, you can, you also want to have a way to get rid of it. So for example, I've set it to shift shift Q, but you can set it to to well, basically anything except the escape key, because I just tried that. <laughs> that, didn't, that didn't work. Um, yeah, but but you know, like any any combination, you know, 
something that, that doesn't really do any or trigger anything in the game is usually recommended because you know you don't want to I don't know like drop your weapon when you're doing this in a game for example that's not going to help mm. so just choose a, a toggle so basically this, this allows you to, to toggle it on and off um, and here you, you can even put uh, different hotkeys to either show it or hide it it's, this one allows you to do both in one you can also allow um, or force basically to show it also the system time so that's for example if you don't have a clock but you still want it somewhere to display the current time on your pc so that's what this will do um, and this will show on screen display on uh, captured screenshots and video so you can also disable this so make sure that when you're for example capturing footage it doesn't show up so you just have the gameplay you don't have the overlay and some other things here you can also have a frame rate limiter so you know if for whatever reason you want to limit your frame rate to 60 or whatever fps for for video recording or whatever purpose you have you can do that um, and other cool stuff now monitoring is the main tab and here's where it gets a bit more extensive um, this i usually just leave at the standard 1000 milliseconds polling rate so this basically this this uh, allows you to make either longer or shorter intervals that the all the values are being measured and displayed now here's a full list of all the things you can uh, you can monitor and all these values everything that's checked here is also what's being displayed in your hardware monitor that's not exactly the same as what's being displayed in your game because that is this little column here yeah actually when i first used this software that's where i, where I got confused yeah because they were all being checked and i was like yeah. why is it not showing up in yes. my game so yeah. that's the reason exactly so here's basically where um you know there are some things you want to you want to keep uh in mind so or clock everything you can you can look at you can you can enable it so if you think this list is too extensive for example of the hardware monitor you can also say well uh, you know for example the cpu i don't want to look at so basically you just untick all of them the more cores you get honestly on a thread ripper this is going to take you like half an hour maybe i no, was just kidding <laughs> uh but obviously you know for each core and hyper threading is your enemy in this case uh because you know that's uh each each core is uh you have to do separately or I think actually, maybe can I choose? Yeah, no, I can actually group them up like this. I've been doing this wrong for years. Either that or they just added this in recently. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I'll go with a second. Yeah, exactly. But um, so you can, you can actually just um, select the whole lot of them and say, right, I want to display all of them. And that's only for uh, the hardware um, information tab. What you want to display in game is displayed here. So that's only in OSD. So by doing this, if I, for example, want to display memory usage, I have to select the value, and then I have to tick this box here, show in on-screen display. That means here, now you can see it says in OSD. So that means this will be part of the information being shown in your on-screen display. And then you have some more choices. So you can either um, display it in text, which is just the basic value, like a no this will be like a number, the memory usage, like, I don't know, 2000 megabytes, whatever. Or you can uh, do it as a graph, which show will show you, like, as time goes by, how it changes as well. Or you can even do both. So you can combine the two, you can have both the text and the graph uh, displaying. This will take more room, obviously, on your screen, but it will also give you a bit more information. So that's all up to you. And this you can do per item. So completely customizable. Um, you can even, there's like a, a lot of these, uh, in the old days, do you remember the Lo Logitech keyboards with the LCD display like in the middle <laughs> on, at the top? Yeah, it felt do really innovative at the time. Uh, it, it felt so high tech and premium, you know? And well, I mean, Afterburner also supports that. So you can actually uh, yeah, for display, those still have display. It. Exactly, yeah, if you, if you still have that one of those keyboards, that's really cool. Um, and some other options here you can, uh, completely customize uh, the experience and how it looks. Also, if you scroll down a bit, for example, I have my GPU usage selected. Um, normally, uh, let's see. Yeah, normally you, you have your graph limits. So obviously GPU usage is in percentage. So that will be 100 to, uh, sorry, zero to 100%. 
but you can also right now it would be displayed in the in the game in the overlay with the label gpu usage but if you want to call it differently like i don't know um you know you want to for example say the the type of gpu you have so 2080 ti usage oh, usage here we go so you can for example customize or actually closes when i press enter that's cool monitoring here we go so you can actually then say i want to override that and actually it will remember that so you can have like custom tags and names uh, the same for well this is the graph name you can also do the group name so everything that has to do with the gpu will be grouped together um, and you can also say like you know i want to display that this is a 2080 ti for example so it, it should display 2080 ti instead of gpu again or, or your system name or whatever you want to call it um, and you can even assign it a, a different color so standard this will be like a greenish color but you can also say no i want it uh, blue there we go okay and now it will show up as blue like the text there's uh, some more options here you can also log everything uh, into a file which is also useful if again you want to analyze it um, afterwards a lot of people with technical backgrounds sometimes do this to to find you know analyze data and, and find problems uh, in systems um, and you can then also for example have a hotkey to uh, you know for the logging so that it doesn't always log you can basically just uh, you know have a hotkey when when it starts and when it st should stop logging yeah so same with like setting up your overclocking profiles with the hotkeys yeah 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 but again this is just a lot of possibilities and uh, things you can you can customize now as for the uh, th that's that that already allows you to do a lot of customization uh, basically let's see if we can um if we can start up a game or something that i can actually show you how that looks i don't know which one is running if, if there's anyone running uh well if you want to try then i wouldn't take young blood no? that one won't work right now i think it worked but it will work but i mean we'll need extra logins which we don't have oh uh, yeah okay yeah that's true it's not not logged in by default so let's just take quake 2 rtx for example Now I'm curious to see if it will work right away. Was there an afterburner update? There's there's uh, afterburner updates all the time, yeah. my man. Um, so here you can see now, for example, it's saying uh, 2080 Ti. I guess that's also a good way to confuse people if you have like very low end GPU and yeah. you don't like. But actually, it you guys don't see it. <laughs> you guys don't see it because it's on the top left and there's like a logo obscuring most of it. You can see some of it, obviously. Yeah, actually, so... But what I'll do is... You can also change the positions. Yes, exactly. So uh, what I want to show you now is where uh, Riva Tuner Statistics Server comes in. Remember that, that little second program that we installed that actually allows you to, to do this overlay as well? You can find the little icon in your the bottom of your system tray. Uh, with, it's like a little monitor with, with the number called with 60 on it. And if you mouse over it, it says Riva Statistics Server with a version number you can click that and it opens this window and basically just the program and this again allows you to do some customizing of how it looks now you can see here this is similar to how it just looked in the game right but here you can see there's some corners and basically just you can click this one and it will shift the the display to the top right so if i now switch back to the game and this will actually do in real time as you can see now it's on the top right magic yes um, you can even say there's like an offset that's these little numbers here so the, now it's right now it's saying uh, 100 i think it's pixels i'm not so sure i think it, pixels like 100 pixels from the top and 100 pixels from the side so it should leave a margin of 100 pixels on either side but I, if i want to double that for example now it's it should be further from the side i don't know if you noticed this maybe i can uh oh, wait. maybe i can do something a bit more extreme so it's a bit more obvious 500 there you go it's it's more removed from the side now right so you can completely customize where you want to put it um, also the size so there's a little toggle here or a little um, um, thing you can drag and uh, you can't really see it now because of the offset the, the, there's a preview here i'll just put it back to uh well whatever to zero so you can quite clearly see it 
because if I move this little thing here, you can see that the text gets either bigger or smaller. So if you want like really huge text, hey, that's possible. There you go. It will yeah. it will obscure a lot of the uh, the visual, but you know it's more clear. Then it's probably not wise to use graphs too, <laughs> since it's so big. Yeah, well, you, you want to find a balance. Yeah, you want to find a balance. And also, you can cu customize how it looks. So here's the, um, the display palette. So for example, I, I think this is like orangey or something. But if you want a blue, you can just choose this, and the text will show up as blue. I think you can even, what is this, the edges or something? No, this is something different. Hmm. Anyway, so these are like the components of what it shows. Oh, I think this is the fill thing. Yeah, here we go. So if I do this white, yeah, there we go. So you can, just to make sure it's it's like very visible, it also allows you to put like a background uh, behind it. So here, you, now you should be able to see there is a background of my choosing um, underneath it. Or you can just dis, uh, disable that. And there's a lot of things here, options like that. Uh, right now it's rasterized 3D. Um, that is displaying. You can also do vector 3D. Um, this is basically disabling the whole feature. <laughs> um, the coordinate coordinate space, uh, viewport or frame buffer. I, I'm not 100% sure what this does. Here, by the way, now, right, cool. Uh, you can also see that there's a very different um, way of displaying it. This is the way it used to be, I think, in uh, like the old Afterburner. So it's a much more simplified and a different way of uh, projecting it on, on top of the, the game. But it's uh, just, you know, like a very, very basic uh, pixely uh, font type. It can still do the graph, as you can see. Um, but the rasterized one is, is much more. I think you can even, I saw somewhere you can even just um, like set up. There's a hell of a lot more functionality even. I think you can also do, like change the font even, something like that. I don't know. Anyway, um, so yeah, basically here's also where you can change how it looks and um, how you want it to look and what, what contrasts most, for example, with your, with your game to make it stand out more so that you can actually follow uh, and, and check out the statistics while you are gaming and that they're visible. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, it's a shadow. So you can see there's a, I don't know if it's very clear for you guys, but there's, um, when I dis when I disable the shadow, there's like almost no black edge around the, uh, around the font. When I enable it, it's, it just makes it stand out more. So again, this is something to make, to, to help the visibility. And again, this, this you can do in real time. While the game is running, just, you know, switch to Windows and change, you can change and play, play, play around with how it looks. Um, and switch it around to any corner you like. It's that that'll work just fine. Um, yeah. And also this, you can you know you can say, do you want this program to start with Windows? Yes or no? You know, once you boot up your PC, you can make specific um, profiles for for games. For example, so if in one game, for example, is very bright, then you need, for example, uh, some a profile with uh, a dark background behind it so you can see it more easily or a different color. Uh, or you might want to see different uh, statistics, you know, different uh, things showing up. You can customize all of that in, in this display as well, or in this program, I should say. So very handy little program. I hope you'll agree. Uh, it didn't turn blue, you said. Well, I think it did, but maybe I didn't switch to the game. So let's see if I apply this. No, nope, it didn't actually. Ah. So did I force, maybe I forced it in, in Afterburner. So some of these settings, show on statistics, I don't know if this maybe, no. Um, some of these settings are also intertwining with the settings in Afterburner. So with the monitoring things here. So it might be that I uh, did something to override the uh, group and or all the uh, settings basically. Because let's see if I change this. And I say it needs to be blue. Maybe then it will change to blue. Oop. Well, that took a while to uh, process. Oh, not yet. Maybe if I, no. All right. Well, that's something that I'm not 100% sure how that works. It, it, it tends to, um, 
I remember that I could change that basically in here as well. Um, in, in afterburner settings. But anyway. I remember it was uh, right under by text. But I don't see that right now here. What do you mean? The text color. Here? Yeah. Yeah, it could be this, but it's also not red, so that's why it's weird. It's yeah, now... because when, when I use it, I just change that color. And oh, maybe it's works. here. Ah, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Here's, here's where I forced everything. See, again, there's a lot of options hidden away in little menus. Um, again, when you, for example, well, GPU temperature, let's, let's keep that in mind. So I've basically forced all the colors to be orange in this case. But I can also say, no, I want to change it to blue. Um, each and every single one or different one. So let's, let's just do different ones and see what happens. So there's different levels of displaying uh, graphics, or sorry, yeah. displaying uh, information. And so that's why all these different colors are, you know, color zero to four. They will apply to different levels of colors. Um, so let's see when we apply this. Apply, okay. And now we don't see anything. And oh, maybe, it's gone. Maybe, no, here we go. <laughs> so see, now, now it's actually changed um, at least some of the colors. It didn't change the values that much, though. So that might be a different, one of the different values. Again, just play around with this, and then you can see uh, how you can do that. But it's very, you know, it, it just offers you so much uh, possibility, so many, so many options to do all this kind of fine tuning and tinkering. Um, so. Yeah, you can just make it look however you want it to look, and it's quite useful. So that's quite cool um, about this, uh, about Afterburner, and specifically the uh, Reaper Tuner Statistics Server as well. Again, very useful application. I've, I've used it a hell of a lot of times, specifically to find out if somebody was having problems, like what is actually causing problems, what, what is bottlenecking here. And it's very surprising sometimes what you'll be able to find with it. but it will help you to find the root cause a lot of the times. So yeah, those were uh, a couple of things you can do with, with MSI Afterburner. Did I skip anything? Did I, um, did I miss anything, any option that wasn't, uh, that I didn't explain that you guys want to know about? Well, we've got to give him some time because of the delay, so. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe in the meantime, we can choose our, our, or we can draw our final winner. What do you think? Uh, the last winner already. Well, yeah, we're getting near the end of the stream, so. Well, guys, you heard it. <laughs> Uncle Pete wants to stop the fun. Well, you know, it's been like two hours. So again, you know, people are already saying that it's, it's beginning to feel like a college, like a class. Um, so yeah, you know, don't want to bore you guys too much. Uh, these were already quite detailed settings mm -hmm. I, I tried to show you. Um, again, it's, it's a very big program. We always get a lot of questions about it, which I understand. Um, so yeah, we just wanted to make a stream where yeah, we show I you a lot of the basic functionality of MSI I think once MSI everyone Afterburn. really starts to try it out, they're going to appreciate you know, this lesson. It's, it's, it's one of those things where you, know, you just play around. The, the way I learned was just by messing around with this program. I learned the most about it. And, and I also learned how to, a lot of ways how to not do it, mm. because then it failed. Um, and then I, I you know, made some right, so nothing searches. Nothing exploded, right? No, no, no. no, no, no that's no. good. So well, remember, not, nothing will explode. Not in real life. <laughs> not in real life, no. All right, so I think we have our last winner of today. Nice. And his name is... Uh, Hmm. It's N4S7Y. You what? can you can guess what that means. N4S7Y. Yeah, I'm gonna it. say nasty. How did you know that? <laughs> well, because I, I I'm you know I'm old enough to know mm. lead speak right. when it when it started. Like <laughs> eat lead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back One three days. three seven. Congratulations, man. Hope you enjoy the code. Yeah, exactly. We're going to send it to you as soon as possible. And uh, yeah, I hope you do something nice with it. Um, thanks, uh, SD Socrates. Um, I'm, pr I'm, I'm sure you are a good looking person as well. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, want to, I don't want to say dude because I don't know. But... Don't assume it's gender. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe. Oh, there was more. And, and also, guys, in. so if people ask you how 
does MSI Afterburner work? How can I use it? Just send them the link to this stream and say, just watch this. Or if there's any specific part you can point to, then you don't have to do it, you know? You don't have to be the one to explain everything. But if you want to be the guy that you know, sounds like hacker man, you know, like I, I know everything, you can use this knowledge to you know, make, just make impressive explanations to people like, oh, yeah, exactly. I, know I, I know exactly how to do this. Don't worry about it. I'll just show you. Well, actually, maybe <laughs> you know, Pete sounds like he's joking about it, but I actually did have those kind of experiences where, in which I had to tell my friends like, hey, what card did you have? Did you yeah. know that you could get some more extra performance like, yeah. for free? Yeah. And then, you know, usually the, the, the reaction you get is really appreciative. Yeah, of course, because people don't know. A lot of people yeah. don't know about it. And it's, again, it's free, free extra performance. So yeah, who exactly. doesn't want that? Why not? It's, uh, it's nice. All right. All right. Seems like no questions. No, yeah, no. I mean, uh, well, let's just uh, discuss or announce the stream for next week. Next week, uh, mm. we will be back. Well, not me and Ja, but somebody else. Eric, I think. I've heard the, a rumor. The Diet Coke guy. Exactly. Um, he will be back building a PC with AMD components. So obviously that's the thing you want to do right now. Um, we're going to show, or he's going to show you how to make a, a great MSI AMD build. I think he's also going to use as many MSI components as possible, right? So, yeah. you know, so it's, you it's not just a motherboard and graphics card. And I have heard rumors that there's going to be a Navi in there. Mm. If it's going to arrive in time yeah, in our for office. For those of you who are already, you know, asking about it. Exactly. It's time to check it out then. And then, um, you know, he's also going to use one of the uh, Sekira cases. You know, one of those. It, it, that thing is huge, right? That thing is big. It's our biggest yeah. case, our, our most luxurious one. Really like the full full size tower with. Yes, most double, premium. Yeah, a double side doors. Yeah, yeah, on glass. both sides. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so it's really cool. So yeah, we hope you guys turn in. Um, uh, yeah, turn up next week and, and watch that stream. If you have any questions about AMD builds, make sure you uh, you ask them next week. We'll miss it you, Rest. Yeah. Um, Jaka, before we go, uh, is there any list of supported GPUs that work with MSI Afterburner? I think a making a list of GPUs that don't work with it is actually faster and shorter. Because as far as I know, it's pretty much any GPU works with it. So again, if you find one that doesn't work with it, let us know. Because then we'll ask the uh, programmer who is doing a great job always. <laughs> If he can maybe add support with it, yep. if it makes sense, because again, there are there could be like you know very like a Tesla or something, you know, one of those GPUs that's being used by data centers. Uh, doesn't really make sense to add support. No, not really. Yeah. It's gonna make sense. Exactly. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Yeah. Thank you guys for all your great questions. Congratulations to the winners, and we'll see you guys next week. Have a good day. Bye bye.